Hiya Twirls, Mr Dobson here. Um, I'm just going to run through how I would go about drawing up uh, lots of the components that make up our our year 12 lamp and, and how I'd go about it and bits and pieces like that. So I'm assuming we can all get on, on shape, so we'll start here. So the first thing I would do is probably create a new folder just to start with and we'll call it... Uh, engineered lamp once we've created that folder okay to just try and keep it a bit more organized we're then going to create a, a new document so call it year 12 lamp okay once I've done that you'll see it brings up uh, our first drawing drawing page. So again, just go very, very basics. Again, all works in three dimensions. So again, we can do any of our drawings, any of our sketches on either the top plane, which is like the floor, if you like, the front plane, obviously that's like a vertical one, and the right plane, which is a, a vertical plane in the, uh, the opposite direction. So... Always going to do that again across the top, all the sort of standard drawing icons, lots of the features. And again, before we start, we always have to do a sketch. So every single operation starts off with sketching it and dimensioning it. We then either extrude it, revolve it, shape it, fillet it, all that. So we'll start off with a basic sketch. <clears throat> again, it's asking us, preempting us to sketch on a plane, so to choose a plane. So for this one, I'm going to choose the top plane. And again, you'll see when I've selected the top plane that all these icons are now in the sketch mode. So they've changed from features to sketches. So line, rectangle, circle, all the way across. And again, there are a few more options under some of these that we're going to look at as we go. So for this one, I'm going to stick with, oh, I'm going to select center rectangle. I'll explain why I do that a bit later on. Um, so you can see once I've selected that, it also has an origin, which is basically where all these lines, all these um, work planes intersect so it's basically the dead center of our page and again it's easy to drag out a shape from that point so again not so worried about the dimensions I could dimension it from here but I tend to just get into the habit of of dimension afterwards all I do click on the dimension icon hover over the line it goes orange click the left mouse button drag it out click the mouse button again it will ask me to then input a value. So for our aluminium base, again, the, you might have these slightly different to me, but um, I'm gonna say that they're 80 millimeters wide. Again, on the length, again, hover over the line, click the left mouse button, drag out your mouse, and again, click it, and then you should be able to input the next length. So again, I'm using 125 millimeters for that. Once I'm happy with the basic sort of dimensioning of that, I then just click the tick box to say I'm happy with it. I'm then going to have to do something with that sketch. So I've got a flat sketch on a piece of paper, an imaginary piece of paper. I then need to extrude it. So I'm going to click on the extrude button. You will notice, I'll just come off that. You will notice that when I hover over all these icons, it does actually give me a little step by step on uh, what I need to do. For each of these tasks so again if you're not sure if you hover over it it is actually telling you what you need to do in what order so if you're unsure it's a case of hover over it to create add or subtract um sketch select the region faces or sketch edges specify when to create a new part or surface add or remove specify the distance so simple as that so again in blue it's telling me what do i want to extrude so i've got to select the sketch i've just drawn Again, you can see it's previewed it because it automatically sets it to 25 millimeters. Um, I'm just going to change that. I think ours is actually 24, but again, that's in tap view. Clearly, that would just create a perfect rectangular block. And again, we could do that and then chamfer the top edges. However, you will also see that I can actually draft it in one go by clicking on this draft angle icon. And then you can see it's drafted it out slightly there. So we want it to have a five degree draft angle on it. So I've just changed that to five, but again, we want it to draft inwards. So again, if I hover over, it tells me 
I then want to uh, cheer to hopefully you'll see that it went from drafting outwards to drafting inwards so hopefully it's starting to look a little bit like the, uh, the casting that we did so again we've got a very very basic crude shape um, whilst we're on this page I will just run through some of the basic mouse operations so again if you've got a, a normal mouse three button mouse the wheel if you scroll in and out with the wheel in the middle obviously zooms in and out if you hold the right mouse button it allows you to rotate and if you actually hold down the wheel mouse button it actually allows you to pan your work again it's quite useful that when we're coming to do assembly so again need to sort of get used to being able to maneuver the image on screen if possible once we've done that basic stage I'm then just going to put a little round over on these edges so again across the top icon here we've got a fillet tool so that's actually rounded over again it tells what to do I could chamfer it if I want to but we're just going to put a little fillet on all the the top edges I would suggest it's probably only about a, you know a one two millimeter radius that we're going to put on and again it's just asking me to decide which uh, which edges I want to to fill it so again I could select it individually just by going around like that you'll see it does a little preview again if I do something wrong if I just click it again it obviously removes it you know you'll notice that if I actually select the middle and, and highlight that top face it'll actually do them all automatically so again just some quick wins I'm actually gonna do the edges as well so again just need to rotate it around just like that so again you just gotta have a little look see what you think I'm quite happy with that sort of two mil radius we then click OK and we're, we're somewhere near where we need to be with our very very basic shape once we've got to that stage and we know what we're drawing, what I tend to do is actually rename the, uh, the part studio, so that's the name of it, so at the moment, just so we don't get confused, I'm going to call that base, just rename that, because again eventually we're going to add some more images to that. Okay, once we've got that, that basic shape drafted up, we're then going to start adding some of the whole details on there. So to do this, again, we go back to our sketching uh, option because, again, we've got to draw on the, the, the holes that we're going to drill in or drill into our work. So I go to sketch again. Again, it's asking me to select what face I want to sketch. So again, I'm just hovering over the top face. It goes orange. Again, that'll then bring up the sketching icons. Again, I tend to use center point rectangle. And go from there. Again, I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can see this. Again, it's quite clever. Because I've used Sense Point when we first started, you'll see that it actually automatically picks up the, the center line because I've started on that uh, original drawing on the origin. However, if you didn't, if you go to any edge, it'll actually find the midpoint automatically. So you can see that square. Again, so I'm not clicking on anything here. I'm just inferencing from that uh, center point. So again, I'm coming down a distance drawing the circle as I say once I've got it basic dimensioned I'm then going to actually put in the correct one for this one I'm just going to put a nominal four millimeter hole in again I'm going to talk through how you might do holes in slightly different ways so I've got that first dimension done again I've then got this problem here of you know where am I going to dimension from because obviously I've got a radius Again, if you wanted to, you could actually uh, you can actually hide that or suppress it. So if I, if I wanted to go back to square edges, I could actually suppress that. So I've just highlighted over the fillet. I could suppress it. You'll see it goes back to the square edge. So in theory, I could dimension it from that edge if that's easier. Again, I will say. 24 millimeters from that front edge again once I'm happy with that I can click on the tick box again I then go I've got to extrude it which seems odd but you'll see this time I've got some different options so I actually want to remove material this time so I'll click on remove and again 
you just got to be careful where you highlight. So when I drag it over, it highlights all of it. Again, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. What you want to be is inside the circle, so it only selects the circle itself. And again, you'll see it previewing it, putting it through 25 mil. Obviously, this all depends on what your design looks like. Again, you can obviously put in it as a blind hole and put in any depth. We can also click on this little um, arrow button here. If you want to go through all, we just select through all so you don't have to worry about a dimension. And in theory, that'll then put a hole all the way through. Again, just a bit easier that one. All I then do is obviously go back to our fillet and I can unsuppress that and it will add that detail back on. So you can always sort of hide things if you want. Uh, if you've got chamfers and, and radiuses on edges. Okay, I'm just going to put the uh, the last two holes on. So again, go to sketch. Again, you could have drawn all three of these on the same sketch, but I uh, just wanted to do it step by step really. So again, select that top face. Go to centre point. Again, just going to run it down. What I would avoid doing, obviously, you can see that it picks up the, the centre. Just keep away from that, otherwise you won't be able to to dimension it. Again, if you're struggling to think, well, I can't really draw it in 3D, this is where you might want to use this icon so I can actually look at it from a straight on view. Sometimes it's a bit easier to draw that way. So I'm just going to put my circle down. Again, all I'm doing is hovering over it. Again, it'll inference, it'll find the middle and you'll see this dotted line appear. That just tells me that it, I want it to be in line. Again, I'm not so worried about the dimensioning as that yet. So I'll get it somewhere near, I'm then going to dimension the circle, again I'll do a 4mm one. In theory there I think it's actually auto dimensioned both of them which is good. So again it tries to do a bit of thinking for you, so it's done that already. Um, what I want to do is then dimension the distance in between those two. And again. I think that distance is around 42 millimetres. Again, we get this uh, thing here. Because we're working in the centre, and that, that's actually a work plane line. That, if you can see that, it allows me to select that work line. So when I come to dimension from the middle, again, I can just do that. Again, if you're not very good at mass, I can actually just use it and divide it by two. A bit like we could do on Pro Desktop, really. So I can get it centralised in there. I'm just going to double check that because I'm not sure that is actually. I didn't think it was. So always best to check. So I'm actually just going to dimension that to, to four millimetres as well. Again, we tend to when we're working on sort of engineering works, always work from centre lines rather than from edges. Just good practice if you like. So again, I'm just rotating it around. So I've dimensioned it. I've got the distance from the, the centre line, if you like, 21mm. I've got the distance apart. I then just need to dimension the distance from here to the centre of the hole. Again, difficult because I've actually removed the hole itself. Again, this is the sort of thing that you come across. Again, what you can do is I'm just going to go to Extrude, right click, suppress it. Oh no, that's not going to work. Unsuppress it, sorry. Um, I'm just going to go to sketch and actually show that sketch so again you'll see that I've, I've now got a center point in there so again that allows me to dimension from that point to the very center and again I make that roughly about 75 millimeters so that'll move that back so again we're all pretty much dimensioned dimension there so I'll just chip, flick it to the top view so you can see what I've done so again Dimension from the centre line, given the distance apart, distance from the whole centres. Once I'm happy with that, I've done all that dimensioning, I'm then ready to remove that material. So again, click the extrude, I'm going to remove material. Again, I tend to zoom in, just make sure that you're on the inside of the hole. Again, sometimes it takes a bit, a bit of time to to find the right bits of that. So again, once I've just selected them two, again, I'm gonna make it go all the way through. Again, if you wanted to do a, a blind hole, clearly you could do, and you know, I could just change that to, to 50 mil and clearly that, uh, that won't go all the way through, but for this exercise, I'm just gonna do through all, but all depends on your design, realistically. 
click on the tick box and then we are basically complete. Three holes done, dimensioned. Again, I'm just going to hide that to a quick sketch. Again, I don't really want it to be blue, so I'm going to change the colour of it. So what I'm going to do is click on the appearance panel here. You can see it's the blue colour there. All I'm going to do is double click on it, change it to a sort of aluminium grey. Again, in um, in on shape, to be honest, all we're doing is adding colour rather than an actual texture. We can do that in school when we get back to school in SolidWorks, so don't worry about it. It's more about getting the, the drawing done. Click on the tick box, minimise that. We've then basically finished that part. So hopefully that's been uh, been useful to you. Like I say, you know, just while we're here, you know, clearly I can use this icon. I can actually rotate with this like on here I can go down I can select perfect right views you know, the back side of it all that type of thing I can do a, a 3d view again if I wanted to I could go into perfect isometric again I could actually put on perspective so I can start producing perspective drawings for my coursework all that type of thing so I'm just going to take perspective off for the moment and keep it on isometric Again, if you did want to copy and paste this into your coursework, you probably don't want the work planes. The last thing is, if you hover over it, so I'm not clicking anything, hover over it, right click. I can either hide the right plane, hide all the planes, or hide other planes, or hide all of them, get rid of them all. I can also get rid of this origin. So again, hover over it, right click, hide, and then I'm left with that, um, that perfect view, if you like, of where we need to be.